Hey guys, it's been a little while since I last recorded a video, so I thought it was about time again. What I want to do is show you two of Illustrator CS6's new features. One of them's applying a gradient to a stroke, and the other one is the new technique for creating patterns with the pattern options panel and editing mode that we can enter. But first of all, let's select these two objects here and increase the stroke weight a little bit. And then for the rectangle, I will apply a round corners effect just to change it. And I think that's probably the setting that I've used last, so that will be quite okay. Now on the stroke, what I'd like to do is actually set some round caps so that actually you get that nice rounding on the end. So we're now up to applying a gradient to those two objects and to the stroke of those two objects. So I've actually got the stroke box clicked right here and we'll immediately click on the gradient box here. That will open the gradient panel and I can now show you that, yep, the gradient works. It's kind of cool. There are three different ways of applying a gradient to a stroke. You can either apply it within the gradient, which is a little bit like filling um, an object with a gradient in, in, in my opinion. It sort of um, looks as if this is an actually a stroke that you're applying it to. Um, and then we've got the, the second option which will um, apply the gradient along the stroke. And then we've got the third option which I think is the coolest because um, to create these kinds of effects in the past we had to use some sort of blending technique and have at least two lots of path. And you can see now how cool that sort of applies to that, both, both the closed object, um, the closed path, and the, and the line, which is an open path. So you can do that in both cases and it works really nicely. So let's turn this into a bit more of a tubular looking effect. I'll just add a color stop right there and then press the outer option key and drag that to the other side. And we'll just pull off that black one and we'll change the location markers just to change this a bit. I might just double click this point and turn that into a darker gray and we'll do that with the other one as well. Just make it a little bit darker. I think that looks all right. Okay so we're now up to turning this particular bit of artwork into a pattern tile. Now pattern tiles appear in the Swatches panel. You probably remember that from earlier versions of Illustrator. And when we turn this artwork into a pattern by going to Object Pattern Make, a pattern tile is automatically added into the Swatches panel. You get this little warning that actually warns you about it. And then there's a bunch of different techniques that you can use to create um, the look and feel of your pattern. First of all, you can change the pattern tile type. I'm going to actually use a, a grid-like pattern, which is very similar like, the, like what we had in the previous versions of Illustrator when we used pattern tiles. But you can also use a brick-like pattern, brick by column, and you can even build hexagon-shaped pattern tiles. So this is kind of exciting. Now I'm going to stick to the grid here and what I'm going to do is enable this option at the top here called Pattern Tile Tool. That will allow me to make this pattern tile larger and totally control the spacing. And what you will see will happen is if I make the tile smaller than the artwork, you're starting to get this chain-like symbol. I'll just move it in a bit more. But really I want to put this on an angle and I can use my normal editing tools to rotate this object and let's see if we can start to turn it into something that we were looking at in the example we saw. So I need to go back to the pattern and start to bring this back in again. And we'll just rotate that a bit. I might stop the video whilst I put this in properly. So I've been feeling a little bit 
um, with the pattern tile just to get that just about right and I think we're just about getting it right so I've sort of um, got some overlap here at the top and here at the bottom and that now really looks a bit more like that behavior that we saw earlier so I'm now done and that means that pattern tile is now added so if I add an object onto my document and just jump into the fill box and apply that now you can see that pattern tiles right there and then we can use the traditional ways of scaling just our patterns um, by using the transform tools but deselecting the transform objects here and just reduce the size and you get some cool effects that way so that was a very quick introduction without you know doing in-depth explaining on how everything works but it's a, it's a good way of showcasing how simple it actually is to create a continuous pattern like this and to create these tubular shapes by applying a gradient to your strokes so I say if you haven't got CS6 yet download a copy and have a bit of a play it's uh, definitely worth looking at